has the power to communicate, to sustain, to change, and to identify. I am a musician. I play the clarinet. And playing music has taken me all over the world. Martin Wesley Smith is a composer who has written a number of pieces for me to play, and these are audiovisual pieces. Now, an audiovisual piece is a piece with images on a screen and then electronic music with me live clarinetist, and we all synchronize together. Um, one of the pieces that Martin play, has, has written is called X. Martin's music is always about human rights issues, and these are pieces from places like Papua, Iraq, Afghanistan, and East Timor. And X was one of the pieces, and it means Janana, Guzmao, but it is about the period of the time he was in prison in Indonesia and the situation in East Timor at the time. I took this piece with me on a tour to the United States two weeks after the terrorist attacks in 9-11. And this piece at the very end of it has the most haunting, sad song being sung by this Timorese woman. And the images have her with her hands in the air and on the slab is her child who has died. And she half song, sobs and half sings this song. And after every performance I did of X at that time and since, no one in the audience applauds. Everybody just stands there, sits there quietly weeping because they can, they, they can empathise with this woman and her pain because this was just after a terrible thing had happened to them and the exchange of emotions was very, very raw. I used this story to illustrate the power of music to express and to share feelings. But after uh, a little time, Martin and I got together and decided that we would come to East Timor in 2002. We played our concert in all manner of venues. We played our concert in halls. We played it in um, churches. And we even played it in the UN-run police station up in Hatabiliko, where we exchanged our concert for accommodation in uh, a police cell for the night. Um, it was rather cold, but the most memorable experience. And um, we were a bit worried about this playing this music because the music we were playing was about a period of history that was um, very painful to the people listening. So we were overwhelmed with the response we received. When in Amera, which is a little village also up in the mountains, we did our concert to a packed hall, but on the outside were an equal number of people bashing the door to try and get in. So we sent that lot of people out, played it all over again to the fresh lot of people, and um, that was also fairly extreme because we had to seal off all the walls and it was so hot. Um, but I'd like to um, also say that at the end of one of these concerts, a man came up to him and he said, you have all this music and all this technology, but our music is dying. Can you help us? So in 2003, in November, I began the first of many memorable trips to East Timor to record the traditional music and work out ways to make it sustainable for future generations. But what is this thing called music? Well, the ethnomusicologist, John Blacking, suggests that it is humanly organised sound. But some of you might argue with that. You might say, well, birds singing is music, frogs croaking is music, and even the wind in the trees is music. So clearly what music is is very different for everybody. But one thing is for sure, it is a universal language and it cuts across all manner of societies and nation groups as it has the ability to express emotions that can't be said in language. The person sitting next to you right now, you might not understand the language that they speak, but if they were to sing you a fairly upbeat song, you might think, well, they're feeling pretty good. I don't feel so bad myself. So it has the ability to communicate. Let's try it out. This is Tupukuru Lute. It is a Fataluku song, and I recorded this in the jungle-like surroundings with um, 
um, the musicians I recorded it with, one of whom is a TEDx speaker today, Edson Kamina. And at the end of the first take of the recording, I got up and there was a little green tree snake right behind my bottom um, and <laughs> obviously enjoyed it too and just wandered off, didn't bother about anybody. So here it is. So how's everyone feeling now? <laughs> so, we all have music in our lives, that's clear. And we hear it everywhere, streets, homes, wherever. But song is something everyone can sing, even if they're a bit shy about it. And song has been a way that in Timor, generations of Timorese have passed on oral histories of their clan groups from one generation to the next. And songs are used for all manner of things, from work, where they sing it while they're weeding crops, grinding grain, to the most sacred rituals, where they honour the death of those who have died. Along with song in Timor, for the same purposes, traditionally there have been instruments used in work, as well as sacred rituals, such as the fui, which is a traditional flute, which you see tied to a farmer's work belt, because he uses it to call the, the buffaloes home. And the kakaluta, which is strung between two trees and traditionally used to be used by farmers to stop monkeys from eating the crops. And the corral decor, which is a buffalo horn, used to call on ancestral spirits in times of great need or to alert villages if there was danger coming. But these traditional instruments <coughs> need something to go with them. To play any musical instrument, I believe, as a musician, you must have soul. And the Klama have a, and the Timorese have a very strong word for soul. It's called Klama. And Klama, they believe, resides in the head, but it is the spirit of the people. And when I was going to call my book Lian Husi Klama, Many Timorese said, oh, that's a very strong word. You should be careful using that. But one thing's for sure, the Timorese will open it. So that's what I wanted. So, Lian Husi Klama it became, which means sounds of the soul, sounds for music and Klama for the spirit of the people, both living and both ancestors. But what's this word traditional? I'd like to just talk about it briefly in the sense of traditional for the Timorese. Tradition is the inherited body of customs and beliefs that are handed down from generation to generation by word of mouth or practice. But tradition can also be changed. It can be reworked. We all have tradition in our lives, but we change it. We rework it to make it our, our own. For instance, the Timorese have traditions going from many migrations from from also other cultures from far away as China, Africa, and Portugal. This marching drum you see is called a bobacasa, and it and the flag that is used with it came with the Portuguese centuries ago, and now the Timorese use it for the same purposes, and they regard it as one of their traditional instruments. The music you hear in the streets today in Timor might be the traditional music tomorrow, but changes can happen to music, and also music can be instrumental in change. The best example I can give you is the music that is used in revolution. And what better music than the freedom songs by those that are oppressed, such as from the black cultures of Africa. During apartheid, they sang songs of freedom from the 40s to the 90s. There is a wonderful film called Amandla, which means power. And this is a revolution in four-part harmony, which documents that struggle in music and how music helped to change and end apartheid. I really commend it to you. And also, freedom songs were sung by the Timorese. The most famous Timorese freedom song of all, instantly recognisable to all Timorese, is O Helele. I 
I sang that song up in the mountain. I played it on my clarinet, actually, um, several times. But once I played it very quietly, and this old woman was looking at me, very haunted-looking expression, I repeated it every time I got a little bit louder. Then she started to smile. Then she started to sing. And so did the man next to her and the person next to him. And all these old people were singing with me. And then they started doing a tebi. Truly, it was wonderful. I'd like to also talk to you about identity, the identity of occasion and place and culture. I cannot listen to Samuel Barber's Adagio for Strings without crying because it was sung or played at my mother's funeral. A lovely woman who recorded the most beautiful song, Hadomi Fretlin, could not sing me that song all the times I tried to record it in 2005 without breaking down because it reminded her every time of her husband and, father's, uh, and, and, and father and sons who were killed during Indonesian occupation. And the young people of Topohonas, who I recorded singing the Fallon Teal song in 2012, immediately put their hands over their chest like this with their fists clenched and looked straight ahead, trying to be really strong because it reminded of them, them of the way they had to sing that song in those terrible months in Akusi in 1999 when so many of them were killed and their village was so badly ravaged. The next identity I'd like to talk to you about is a place. And the best m place music identity I can think of are national anthems. We all identify countries according to their national anthems. The most famous one I can think of is the Marseillaise. We all know that's from France. We also all know that it was born out of revolution. Identity through culture. Most of you may know what this instrument up here is and have heard its sounds. It's a didgeridoo from the indigenous Australian people. But do you know this instrument and its sounds? That is the Rama, and it is from Makadadi on the island of Aturo. And I recorded that in 2005 after I'd recorded something else that I'd gone for, and I didn't even know this instrument existed, and I heard its beautiful sounds from a dark veranda. It was really wonderful. The traditional music of Timor has had a tough time. It was almost devastated to extinction during Indonesian occupation. And when the world came to the rescue of the people of Timor in 1999, it brought with them the United Nations and many humanitarian NGOs who brought their own cultures, including their musical cultures. Now, these cultures appealed very much to the young people of Timor because these young people were no longer familiar with their own traditional culture. Many is the time I have gone on bumpy road trips in the past and blaring out and distorted music from tiny mo mobile phones will be distorted sounds of Indonesian or Western pop music being played by my Timorese assistants. Now, I would sometimes say to them at these times, so what do you think identifies your music as being uniquely Timorese? Well, we have many discussions on this subject, but one thing is for sure, these young people have not heard or the music they're about to, that we are about to record or have just recorded, and they are really impressed when they do. The elder people in Timor are very worried that their musical culture will disappear with their passing. They tell me this when I go up to the high villages. They think they will be the last of a long generation of storytellers and cultural custodians because they don't think young people are interested in this culture anymore. However, I am greatly encouraged by some of the recent activities to revive and sustain this culture, such as the Ministry of Education, because it's just started, uh, just in the stages of completion, actually, um, a program to have curriculum taught of traditional culture and music because it's really important that you go for the youngest people in a society where there has been so much damage because it is through these young people that this culture will be sustained. I use the example of the didgeridoo because till a few generations ago, 
This was a culture that was almost extinct and now it flourishes. Identity is really important to everyone and the music of Timor that is so unique to it, albeit with changes in the future, will be the music, the traditional music, must be, must be cherished because that is what helps East Timor to identify itself as a nation.